Outside of the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, stands one of the world's most intriguing sculptures. Within this sculpture are four encrypted messages that people have spent decades trying to solve. While three of them have been decrypted, the fourth remains as one of the world's most well-known puzzles. Today, we discuss the enigma of the crypto sculpture. This is Red Web. Task Force, welcome back to Red Web. Each week, you know us, we're discussing a new mystery, conspiracy, cryptid, you know, some sort of monster, ghost, mm -hmm. specter, or anything in between. I'm your host, Trevor Collins, and with the gut instinct bringing all those questions and Q's and A's, maybe not the A's, I got the A's, right, right, right. Alfredo Diaz. Hello, hello, Task Force. I am back, the one that loves you more. Yes, when you enter into the lunchroom, I am the one that's bringing in the donuts. Why are you sitting at the table with one chair, then? It's a huge table, one chair. Well, you know. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> you walk in, I love you the most. <laughs> I love you the most. It's like, um, so this is like, the, the, so the government put this? Yeah, this is a out statue there? outside, or like a structure like, kind of I would sculpture. I assume like the government did it because it's like right yeah, outside it is, like yeah. Langley. Mm -hmm. What the hell? See, that's what I like about this show. How do I not know about that? You don't know about this? No, I don't know about that. Well, this. that's why you're here. <laughs> yes, true. Um, it's very interesting. But before we get into it, I just got to say, Task Force, in, unless you're driving, I want you to get those baby hands up in the air. Oh. You know, I want to see those baby hands because it's been months coming, mm -hmm. but this is the first episode out after the launch of our baby, beautiful baby hands, plushy. We also right. got a backpack if you want to carry them around with you, like a baby Yoda sort of situation. But yeah, our baby hands plush is available. Super exciting. You can now see him uh, in his full caked up glory. Two plump little cheeks. It, it's cool because like it's something that we mentioned right yeah. when, when we went to go explore Yorktown Memorial Hospital. Oh, nailed it. Nailed it. We always forget. Rarely get that one. You don't even need me anymore. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You stay right there. Um, it, like we just kind of low key mentioned it, and, like mm -hmm. just you know, just like <laughs> like laughing as we're exploring and yep. terrified, and the task force just ran with it. Absolutely. And now it's a plushie. It's a ghost with little tiny hands. That the factory said couldn't get any tinier. They couldn't make them any <laughs> tinier. I said and smaller. Hell, like caked up, like big. <laughs> <laughs> I love that when our design team came to us and said. How does this sketch look? And you're like, yeah, yeah, that's good. It's good. I want them to have little cheeks. <laughs> and then they made it with that. Oh, it's awesome. I just imagine just someone just like just stuffing, more stuffing on the back. Oh, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. More. <laughs> more. 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 Um, uh, the backpack's cool, too. I modeled both, actually. And uh, sorry, my brain like froze there because as I was modeling, like a squirrel came up because we're shooting in the park. What? So a squirrel came up and literally uh -huh. just like sat next to us and wanted oh, food. Oh. <laughs> Baby hands in a new life. Yeah. Still got those tiny hands, there's, but he's kicking it now. Squirrel tiny hands. <laughs> um, and the, the backpack was cool because it just felt like a, it was like, not like an adventurer's backpack. It yeah. In the way it like rolled and folded mm -hmm. from the top. And I was it's like, a cool looking backpack. It's also subtle enough that you don't feel like, you know, you're walking around with something that you might be embarrassed about. You could be like, this is a little cool nod to the task force, but otherwise it just looks yeah. cool. Even yeah. if somebody doesn't know what it is, uh, you just got the little emblem on it and whatnot. Like, me back in SF would be cycling with that bad boy on. But, so this statue. Yes. Okay. Oh, store.roosterteeth.com. Yes. Because I want to sell out real quick. Anyway. Um, so grab them while you can, because I definitely want to grab one for one to just display and one for the little gobble. We don't, it, we don't have a lot that comes out very often, but when we do, Task Force, you guys show up. Yeah, so you guys thank sold you. that stuff out, so thanks. So fast. Um, um, but yeah, the sculpture, the crypto sculpture outside of the so Langley CIA headquarters. In my head, mm -hmm. it's a sculpture right outside, like, you know, Langley CIA headquarters. Yeah. So they definitely put that out there. Then I would assume that they know what it means. Yes. Just right. Someone does. The, right. The, the someone there, the, someone there is like, all right, this is what it means. And, and like, I don't know. It doesn't matter whether you have to be high up or whatnot. CIA, the CIA knows about it. Yes. And has it like already cracked and written down. Well, someone so, does. Yeah. I'm sure someone does. I think, I think but it's like, just I, the author or the creator. Okay, cool. Because otherwise it's just like, I don't know. You just 
security purposes and reasons right outside like CIA right. headquarters. Right, like, right. You, you got to know these things. There's a man with binoculars and a notepad. Right. No, 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 no. It's, it's, for, the, it's for the clues. It's the clues it's you the see. Clue. Well, right. you're staring right at the east wing. Right. That's He's so putting strange. his hand to his <laughs> ear yeah. and talking. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Three out of four solved already. Yeah. So that's awesome because then we already have pieces to it. I don't even... Like, I'd be curious to see, like, if all four get solved, was there a prize? Do you join the CIA? I, <laughs> like, we're we're going to discuss what, what goes, everything in between, all of goes that. down, but yeah. this is pretty cool. And like I said, I'm, I have not heard of this. I'm so... Fa this is... Okay. When I first learned about this, by the way, it's, it was built in 1990. So it's been around for a minute. And I didn't hear about it until recent years. So I'm not surprised, but it's very interesting. And the purpose of it is still kind of up in the air, but... Let's kind of talk about the origin of this sculpture, and then we'll dive into the solved cryptic messages as well as what remains, and then we'll wrap up with kind of the remaining clues that are kind of ongoing to, to Ooh. see if they can solve the fourth message and, and what then all of this comes together to mean. So, the crypto sculpture was built on the grounds of the CIA headquarters, the Central Intelligence Agency for our international listeners. Uh, this is in Langley, Virginia on the West Coast, and it was built, like I said, in 1990 by an artist named James Sanborn. Along with the famous crypto statue, Sanborn installed many other pieces of art on the CIA grounds, such as a garden area, there's a fish pond with wooden benches, there's a reflection pool, and other pieces of stone, including a triangle-shaped black stone slab. Cryptos, I believe in our notes, it was Greek for hidden, but when I looked it up, uh, there's a slightly different definition for it. But mm. all it is to say is the, the prefix of the word is crypt, which is used often yeah. in cryptography, and basically meaning there's an enigmatic meeting tucked away in this thing. So like the, the pond and the benches and stuff, is this just like public area on like CIA grounds? I imagine it's public area because this this structure is meant to be seen by anybody trying to solve it. But these other effects mm -hmm. might be more just on the grounds of on the, the grounds, CIA yeah. campus. Yeah, pretty cool. Just to look nice. I will say kind of jumping the gun. Some of the other structures in the nearby area have Morse code on them. One has a compass rose on it. What and so hell? some people believe that these are part of the puzzle or will be used to finish solving Damn. it. Damn, so you can just kind of run around the grounds. Kind of weird, though. How they're right. just like, come hey. on over to the headquarters of the CIA. Right. Just get up to no good. Lots of top <laughs> secret stuff going down behind those walls. Anyways, run around the outside and right. solve the puzzle. Totally a public playground. It, it's interesting. It definitely is. But the structure itself, let's just talk now about the crypto structure. It's made, or I, I keep saying structure. I also mean sculpture. It's the same difference. It's made of four large copper plates. And there are other elements around it that kind of tap into certain, I don't know, clues and energies and whatnot. For example, there is water, there's wood, there are plants, there is red and green granite used around this structure, as well as a block of white quartz and some petrified wood, which is kind of like wood that's been fossilized into a stone. I'll show you here a picture in a second, Frey. But folks, Task Force, head to our Twitter page at RedWebPod, as always, for those visual assets, or you can watch us on YouTube. But essentially, there is a copper sheet, and that's the, the main piece of this sculpture. And it's kind of waved into an S-shaped kind of pattern, almost like a sheet of paper or an unfurling scroll. And on that copper are four cryptic messages. So these four quadrants are the different messages. And the messages consist of the 26 letters of the Latin alphabet, A, B, C, D, all the way through Z. There are also question marks. Those are the only characters used in these cryptic codes. Um, and the letters aren't embossed into it. They're not engraved into it. They're fully punched through. So you can see through the copper plate through each letter. Let's see if there's a better way to describe that. Seems so elaborate. Whoa. Yeah. I'll try to simplify while you take a look. It's like an S sheet. And it's, then yeah, it's like each a, of the letters are cut out all the way through. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like an S sheet of paper. Yeah. Um. And there's just so many letters. Mm hmm. Oh. I think in total there are about 1,800 characters. What? Uh, including those question marks and letters. And they are split up unevenly throughout each different message. In yeah. fact, the fourth one, the one that's yet to be solved, is the shortest at 96 characters. Oh. 
Uh, I think this is the perfect thing to delegate to the rest of mm -hmm, the task mm -hmm. force. Uh, you know, we're busy expanding, so. Right, right. Well, well, as you were saying, you know, we're we're so we're expanding so fast that now we're starting to expand into the digital frontier. Oh. Yeah. We have a, a new AI system that right. we're willing and ready to talk about publicly. Um, it Seems is like our, we're very willing to talk about it. <laughs> I'm extraordinarily willing. In fact, eager. We have what we call Nickbot. It is an AI editing software proprietary to the Red Web Task Force mm -hmm. Industries. And, uh, you know, we just give them our audio files. I say them because I like to personify my yes. AI. When uh, eventually right. they take over the world, I want to make sure that they knew I was on their side. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then it edits it automatically. It's very budget friendly and it's not a person. Well, we ran out of what happened was we ran out of, we ran out of footage. Very important uh, detail. It's not a person. <laughs> I want to hammer that home. Right. Give a slogan to <laughs> it. Yeah, that's a slogan. It's not a person. Uh, no, the, we ran out of square footage because um, Trevor kind of maxed it out with he just installed a bunch of anti owl defense systems. Right, right. I got the owl turrets. Uh, that are none humane. Of it, never made sense. Because owls are evil. <laughs> and I also have wall-to-wall -wall, like computers from the 50s. That's what the AI <laughs> runs on. Um, but so yeah. like, you know, for those of you that are keeping up with the visualization and the expansion <laughs> the of the Red Web yeah, and yeah, the yeah. lore of the Red Web Task Force, there you go. Right. It's kind of like, uh, we also had our first public debut in the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory original film. Uh, because this is Rooster Teeth's number one podcast about movies. And remember the scene when they plugged in the clues on trying to find the golden ticket and the machine spat out? That would be cheating. Yeah. Oh. So our, our AI's got ethics and standards <laughs> as well. Quite complex. Um, I, <laughs> it really blew the budget, though. We're but really but, but, but all that is to say Cost is, I mean, we might use our editing bot to maybe figure out Puzzle 4. And we could use Task Force. We could use your... There we go. Your help in uh, group thinking that. I like to think that there's someone in the task force that literally just could walk up to this as they're listening to the episode and be like, Ch -ch -ch, photo. Yep. Or you could Google it and solve it from, you know, wherever in the world. Or more so that it's like cool seeing the task force on location. Oh, task force on location. Mm -hmm. Whole other show. Ooh. But yeah, I mean, all it is to say is that otherwise it looks like a pretty mundane sculpture it just looks like uh, from a from a glance if you didn't know it just looks like it would be a nice little sculpture until you start to read it and you realize that's just gobbledygook scrambled text with a couple question marks throughout and coming back to Sanborn who we're going to talk about a lot he's the guy who created this structure and everything he worked alongside of retired chairman of the CIA office of communications Ed Sheet in order to come up with the cryptographic systems that were used in order to create these puzzles, these codes on the structure. Sanborn shared the sculpture contains a riddle within a riddle, and this will become very important as oh, we God. expand into the theoretical area of the solve, basically meaning that it can only be solved using the meanings of the four cryptic messages. So there are riddles that help solve each of the puzzles, each of these four different sections, and then using all four solves all four solves together are supposedly a yet another riddle, which will then solve the whole thing, if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. It's just even thinking about it makes my brain hurt. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> it's a lot. It's just, it is a lot. As, I mean, cause, because it's like looking at it visually, too. I'm like, holy hell. It's it's almost like looking at the Matrix code. Oh, my God. that's a, <laughs> It's a great point. It really is. Where you can literally just look at it and then just stare at it for hours and right nothing happens right now start... task force we are all just neo looking at the code in episode or you know part one or whatever right by the end of the movie though by the end of this podcast you're gonna start seeing are the owls cypher you're gonna start seeing baby hands <laughs> you're gonna start seeing owls you're gonna start seeing giant catfish oh no we're all gonna be leaping oh, out of those letters i forgot about the kid oh don't worry i i've i've got a notepad filled with everyone's greatest fears I do want to give myself a correction. Earlier, I said 96 characters. The fourth message is the one that remains unsolved, and it remains very popular. It's 97 characters. But yeah, that's that's kind of the backstory to this particular sculpture. Now, this is where it starts to get a little confusing. This is where my layman brain now has to communicate the cryptic ways with which they have made these puzzles, oh, okay. uh, how a human can tr try to decipher them, and... A few wrenches are thrown in by Sanborn himself, oh, such damn. as intentional typos 
or intentional removal of characters. Oh, that damn you. In his words, he literally is just like, eh, you know, just shake things up a little bit. Right. And I'm like, dude. Where everyone's already just like, it's already, ah, yeah, it's already confusing. I yeah. Buckle up. So yeah, stop me if you have any questions. Yeah. I, I will say, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, he's still alive. Yes. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, how old is he? If you don't mind looking that up, there, Christian. Um, seventy six. Seventy. Oh, oh. seventy six. And he and he does have plans that if this isn't solved by the time of his unfortunate passing, right, he has a method in place to help pass on the solution to someone else, so that way it's never lost. Ah, yeah. My head went to a nuke comes out of the ground. <laughs> what? Oh, Did this is the do. worst kill switch. Right. Ugh. Worst kill switch ever. But with that said, awesome. Because we've done a lot of episodes and some that some that are quite similar to this. Mm -hmm. And we, we'll just, we'll never know. Never know. This, someone alive knows the answers. Absolutely. Awesome. Right. And, you know, if a solve comes through, we'll do an update. So again, let's kind of rehash some of what we already know. The sculpture contains four ciphers or codes, we'll use those moderately interchangeably, which are all referred to by K1, K2, K3, and K4. Obviously the, the K is just for the, the name of the sculpture. Right. And then the number is referring to each the of the different second. puzzles. Oh, here we go. So let's talk about K1 real quick. K1 is a poetic phrase written by Sanborn himself. Quote, between the subtle shading and the absence of light, lies the nuance of illusion. It is worth noting, I'm going to read these phrases as they are meant to be read. However, this poem includes an intentional misspelling of illusion, and it actually says, Eclusion, I-Q-L-U-S-I-O-N. It is known that he meant illusion, but there is an intentional typo right. in the solve, which does not help if you're trying to solve something and you see I. Q, L, wait, right. what's the word going to be? But hey, he likes to shake it up. Moving on to K2, it hints at something buried at the coordinates of the CIA headquarters and provides latitude and longitude locations located about 100 feet southeast of Kryptos, the sculpture itself. Wait, like, so people can, if they solve it, they go digging? If they solve it, they'll get the coordinates, the coordinates being very close to the sculpture. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I get, Christian, is that the intent is to go digging? Because actually, I... That's... Awesome. That is very cool, but we actually but, don't talk about that much more through the rest of the episode. So if there's something buried right. that has been uncovered, I would love to know that Awesome, part. but I just, I feel like that would cause a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Start people, digging around the headquarters. Dim, it's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> right, right. People just digging holes. <laughs> it's, it's like, the, where's Stanley Yelnats out here digging <laughs> up the <laughs> headquarters? <laughs> um, movie ah. podcast about mysteries, I'm telling you. It really is. So while you look that up, Christian, I'm going to go ahead and talk about what K2 kind of comes out to say, because this one's much longer. So as it is written, it says, quote, It was totally invisible. How's that possible? They used Earth's magnetic field, X. The information was gathered and transmitted underground to an unknown location, X. Does Langley know about this? They should. It's buried out there somewhere, X. Who knows the exact location? Only WW. This was his last message. X. 38 degrees, 57 minutes, 6.5 seconds north. 77 degrees, 8 minutes, 44 seconds west. ID by Rose. So two things I want to note. The initials WW will come back to. As well as West ID by Rose is another thing. I just want you to keep a mental note. We'll come back to these two things. Just because I know nothing about anything. Yes. Why are there minutes with the coordinates? I don't know much about longitude and latitude, but there is a good reason as to why it is oh, so labeled it's an actual, in time. It's just it's an actual thing. Yeah. So so that is like you know when you look at a Bro. globe and you see the 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 grid system, like yeah. the vertical lines and the horizontal lines. Mm -hmm. Those are essentially measuring time as well as location. And so because you know as you go around the earth, there are different time time zones and whatnot. Someone yep. out there is pulling their hair out. I'm giving my layman interpretation, right? Because right. I actually don't know this very well. Look, I just need you to just like squeeze the juice, break it down, put it in a sippy cup, and let me <laughs> <laughs> and let me drink the knowledge. I love the metaphors we come up on this. Someone, please make a hypercut of all of our amazing metaphors. Um, Ooh. Squeeze the knowledge into a sippy cup. So, so basically, at the high level, you have degrees, 
Those are big differences in location. Going from one degree to the next degree can yeah. be many miles. And so oh. to get more specific, they came up with tighter and tighter measurements. And that's where they go from degrees to minutes to seconds oh. to tighten you in on a very specific location. That's but all then, that really means. God, but then how would you calculate that? Is it walking speed? But then again, it's like, well, what if someone has longer legs? I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know the origin once again right i just right. know that it's it's the intent of being very specific without going to 52.12893575 yeah. you know like yeah it seems like way a cleaner there. way of measuring it but yeah. and it probably has something to do with like sun and the moon and stars and maybe a compass rose and a, a book probably a book involved <laughs> 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 but I, I i don't know it's basically just a way to be very specific yeah that's awesome i didn't know that so the first two sections of K2, as I kind of just read, were encrypted using a Viganer cipher, or I've also heard to it referred to as a Viganer cipher. These types of ciphers are polyalphabetic, which means that each letter can be represented by multiple letters, unlike the Caesar cipher that we've talked about before in episodes like Cicada 3301, where one letter would specifically B. be decoded to one other specific letter. Right. So wait, so if I was looking at a cipher, mm -hmm. A on the cipher could branch out to like multiple different yes. things. Oh, So you can't my just God. do a one for one, which is a, oh, a lovely which, little Caesar solve. Right. I mean, which that would make like it all A's so equal much. O's, yeah, all that, may, that would equal make ends. it yeah. too easy. That's mm -hmm. the kind of like little like puzzle and cipher I'd write for my spouse or children or something like that. <laughs> yeah, this not outside more, the CIA. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> So essentially, these are each solved by repeating keywords, which inform you on a matrix of 26 letters t wide by 26 letters tall, columns and rows. Oh, you goodness. need to have keywords in order to find within that matrix what each letter kind of turns into. Holy hell. So the first keywords for this particular cipher, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible, were, I'm going to sound this out, palimpsest and cryptos. And then the second keywords were abscissa and cryptos. Mm. So again, that would orient you in the coordinate system of alphabet going horizontally and alphabet going vertically, a what? 26 by 26 grid. Well, he's purposely misspelling. So purposely misspelled incest and crypto. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that in? I feel Our like- AI might we'll have wiped see. that one. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what that word is. P A L I M P S E S T. Is that a name? The name of a king who loved his daughter. Feel like very you Google much. it, and it was just like the heiress of a kingdom in 1840, in just like national treasure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just, is a word. According oh. to Merriam-Webster, it is a writing <laughs> material such as a parchment or tablet used one or more times after earlier writing has been erased. Ooh, second okay. definition, something having usually diverse layers or aspects apparent beneath the surface. Got it. An abscissa. How about that one? A, you B, S, C, I, S, S, A. So you have a riddle with multiple layers using words that mean multiple layers. Jeez. Oh, oh, yeah. This starts to get whoa. stacked quick, which is why, you know, as we scratch the surface of many different topics, we aren't going to be able to go way, way, way deep on this one. No, no, no. Because we're I not mean, cryptographers. Right. But I'm going to try to keep it understandable on your workday commute. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to blow your memory cells uh, <laughs> the way to, to your job. You know, I'm sorry. I can't come into work today. My brain is fried. <laughs> I got fry brain. The numbers missing. What does it mean? Per Merriam-Webster, abscissa is the horizontal coordinate of a point in a plane Cartesian coordinate system obtained by measuring parallel to the x-axis. So that's really on the nose, those two words, actually, for this type of cipher. Very interesting. But with that said, let's move on to K3 before, uh, you know, our clocks bust, our, our brain clocks. So K3 is an excerpt from archaeologist Howard Carter's diary describing the opening of a door in King Tut's tomb on November 26, 1922. And as a person who loves ancient Egypt and just everything about like uncovering tombs and looking at ancient Egyptian culture, this is so cool to me. So the passage as it reads, slowly, 
desperately slowly, the remains of the passage debris that encumbered the lower part of the doorway was removed with trembling hands. I made a tiny breach in the upper left-hand corner, and then widening the hole a little, I inserted the candle and peered in. The hot air escaping from the chamber caused the flame to flicker, but presently, details of the room within emerged from the mist. X. Can you see anything? So here we have yet a couple other typos. I forgot, in K2, the word underground was spelled with a uh, underground, with like a double U, two U's as opposed to O-U. And in, in K3 here, the word desperately was spelled wrong at the very beginning. And then the word anything at the very end of the cipher ends with a Q. So it's anything Q. So that's the other typo here. So this, the K3 cipher was solved with a different type of cipher. So uh, what we're seeing basically, K1, K2, and K3 all have different types of solves. And then it sounds like K4 will need these other clues, these other ciphers in order for it to be solved. But K3 itself was solved with a transposition cipher, which rearranges the letters of the original text based on a particular permutation. And real quick, as far as a transposition cipher, it's a method of encryption by which the positions held by units of plain text, i.e. letters, are shifted according to a regular system so that the cipher text constitutes a permutation of the letters at hand. Basically, for, for us uh, regular folk, it's just a different way to encrypt the hidden message. Yeah, this is, I wouldn't say confusing, I'd say more so it's just, it's just deep in many mm -hmm. ways where you think you just kind of go, okay, there's a cipher, maybe it's an elaborate cipher, but now they're just like, you solve it one way, now there's a new way to solve it. And, and it's just, it's a lot of roadblock. I feel like you you get through one and he throws another roadblock in your way. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I was trying to solve this or if I was even partially intelligent enough to even attempt to solve this, I'd solve a piece and then just go, oh, damn it. What? Why? <laughs> Why are you doing this now? And the whole time. Right. But like, no, I mean, as, as it's being fed to me in my sippy cup, it makes sense. We got you a big sippy cup, too. It's a big one. Dude, big should we one. have got, a red web sippy it's cup? It's got handles. <laughs> for, the, for the baby task force members out there, you know? Got baby brains, but they're big brains. We you know, know. <laughs> feed them good. Hydrate them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. So we have, so far, three different ciphers to solve three different riddles that will help with the fourth. And they all have kind of different meanings. The first one being quite short, and it's Sanborn's, like, own poem talking about illusion and the nuance between dark and light, that there's different meanings within. You've got this, this coordinate system with a buried clue and what sounds like communication between two unnamed individuals back and forth. And then you have straight up the diary of Howard Carter, then encrypted and also placed in here. The person who discovered King Tuck's tomb and like, how does that fold into what we've got? And so it really starts to lay this really, really confusing groundwork on where is this going? What is the big meaning of all this? What, what you know, what's this leading to? And it's, it's almost impossible to say without the fourth one. But a few things of note, at least here in K3, there were three letters that appear near the beginning. This is going to sound strange, but the beginning of the bottom half on the left side, there are characters that are written in superscript, i.e. like when you see X squared, the two mm, yeah. is in superscript. So these letters are Y-A-R. We don't know exactly what those mean just yet. There isn't really a whole lot of context for these letters, but it is worth noting that these are one of the few letters that, or in fact, the only letters that are written in subscript or superscript. See, that roadblock. We're just like, oh, now we got subscript, huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people do speculate that this Y-A-R could have something to do with these intentional typos. It could have a deeper meaning, but up until right now, here in right. 2022, we don't know for sure. But at this point in time, again, to date this podcast recording, it's been seven years since anyone has made actual progress oh. in cracking the full code. And with that said, I do want to walk through a little bit of a brief history as far as the solves thus far, because yeah. I'm sure you're all wondering who solved this, who when, solved where, it? why, and how. Is it different people? Mm -hmm. Have they collaborated? Oh, it's oh, it's lovely. Are there, are they it's at dramatic war with and juicy. Other? Is there turmoil? Mm -hmm. Well, here we go. Let's let's start 
Again, as I like to do, we're going to live this in the current time. So we're going to take ourselves back to 1999. At this point, no known solution is made, certainly not made public. I mean, and in early 90s is when it was 1990 created. was when it was put out. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Right. So 99 is the year that we're 90. pretending to be in right now. And in this year, Jim Gilligley, a computer scientist from Southern California, was the first person to have claimed to solve the first three messages, and he subsequently shared his findings. After the CIA heard of this, they announced that analyst David Stein had solved the same passages a year earlier in 1998 using a pencil and paper technique. Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, hold on. So someone was like... I figured it out. I figured it out. Uh, what was it computer science? Scientists? Yes. Oh, it's mm -hmm. probably buff. Um, oh, so man. like rippling it muscles, out. vascular, right. heavy, tippy toe. You know, I'm, I'm sure he's like you know after hitting the sesh, whether it be right. weights or you know just uh, maybe like a Rubik's cube for the brain or something like that. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's, a, it's a lead Rubik's cube. Right. It's weighted, <laughs> and each face is a different stone. <laughs> yeah, very heavy. So you wrong. He rocks that, figures it out. And then, wait, this, so the CI, this seems kind of like petty. I don't know. <laughs> it's weird, right? It's weird. It gets so, weirder. So someone figured it out, uh -huh. and the CIA was like, no, no, we had a guy that figured it we out got last a guy. year. We had a guy. Um, and yeah, and if I'm, and if I'm what? sitting here in 1999, Dude, if I'd I, be pissed. If I'm a buff scientist, <laughs> and, I had to, and I'm like, eureka moment. I slam down my protein shake and start rattling right. away. On my dot com early mm -hmm. internet, sort of like I gotta, I gotta send a digital electronic message to the CIA to tell them you got mail, right? And then they say, no, 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 we figured it out. I'm like, what? Oh, what? Why on. did you say anything? What? Yeah. Well, it only gets more dramatic. Like it's a a high school drama sort of situation it here. Kind of so, feels like it. See, at that point, if that was if I was the computer scientist that figured it out, that we I'm beefing with the CIA. Right. Right. <laughs> So we got Jim Gilligley. On your list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim is like, you just made the list. <laughs> the list, CIA. <laughs> so, yeah, essentially, coming back to this now, David Stein does seem like somebody who copied homework, but it's worth mentioning that in November of 98, the CIA did publicly state that they had an analyst working on solving this puzzle, but it wasn't until later in the year 1999, July, in fact, that the CIA then publicly stated, we solved it. So somewhere within those months, Jim Gilligley came forward saying that he solved it. And then the CIA said, yeah, it's great that you solved it, but we also had actually solved it back in 98 with David Stein. It's a little clustery on, on the dates and times, yeah. but do you follow? Oh no, I, I do. I'm just- Seems a little petty. It's so petty. Well, let me get more petty. Let me get Tom petty. Uh, <laughs> because, that that aside is like a little like kind of cluster of dates. Yeah. But in March of 2000, the National Security Agency revealed that some of their employees, Ken Miller and Dennis McDaniels, and two more unnamed individuals had actually solved the same three passages back in 92. So now the NSA is coming forward saying, yeah, da, 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 da. we actually solved it many years prior. I would have and get ready to write down a note, Christian. I would have sat there and would have been like, man, you government. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're right. You have just like a rate. Well, like, for, what? For all intents and purposes, you have a data scientist out there in California just going like, this seems interesting. Yeah. And as soon as he raises his hand to turn in his assignment, the government comes out of the woodwork going like, yeah, we are all of us already yeah, solved we it. We already had We it. get the credit. And then no do and then even when, even within the government, they're just like, no, but we get the credit. Right. Different se like well, sectors. Even, even within the NSA itself, because it also oh, yeah, came there out was two of them, right? Well, there was four people that oh, had solved it in ninety two. Everyone solved this damn thing. But already, then, man, what the <laughs> But then in ninety three, there were three other cryptanalysts from the NSA that supposedly solved it uh, in 93. So we yeah. have people all over the 90s solving this and just not talking about it publicly. I mean, is it, it, but now that it's out publicly, they're all going, no, 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 but we actually did is it. Is it like so, logged somewhere? That's what I want to know. Right? Where's the receipts? Yeah. Okay. That's what I want to know. I, I want to know. But now that we've laid out all the drama, we got all the dates out of the way, let's come back to David Stein, the 98 individual. He wrote an account of how he solved his codes or those codes 
mm-hmm. in 1999. This account was only published privately in a CIA newsletter and was kept private until Gilligley himself was the one who came forward. So to kind of answer as to the, why the drama went on here and actually answer your question, was this documented? At least with David Stein, it was. I'm not sure about the NSA situation, but not knowing where this, this puzzle goes, having a CIA analyst solve it, he kind of kept it internal until somebody publicly also solved it. Then they said, okay, maybe now it's worth publicizing our, our solve. So yeah, okay, maybe so it's it not like receipts. Homeland Security sort of situation. Uh. The NSA then released their documents debunking all of the claims. And then they showed that their three, their three individuals from mm-hmm. 1993, that they were the first. I'm very confused because they had four people named in 92 that came forward, but they at least have documentation of, for the three solving oh, in 93. So they do have receipts. So we got those tangible Damn. records. Come out and say it. Well, you know what? I solved it in 89. <laughs> the year I was born. <laughs> wow. Before it was even up. On the back of my birth certificate. No, he might have he, he had like written in crayon. He might have baby hands, but he's got a big old brain and a juicy cup. Wait, juicy cup. And Whatever. A, and a, I mean, look, it's a little juicy sippy cup. <laughs> sippy cup. Uh, but yeah, we also have the memorandum or a memo from 93 that shows the NSA's involvement with this puzzle. That'll be another visual asset if you want to check out our Twitter or YouTube pages. But Everyone that claimed the solve, which which is what's nice about multiple people trying to solve this, is that you can now independently check against everyone else's solve. And you can see, did you get something different? Did you get something the same? Oh, true. Yeah. And they all actually found when solving it that passage two, i.e. K2, ended with West ID by Rose. That's the thing I wanted you to earmark earlier. It's all squished together. So it's like, yeah, West did by Rose. <laughs> But so looks, just but to reiterate, yes. they all solved K1? They all solved K1, 2, two and, and three. 3. And they all came up with the same solves. I bet you someone solved K4 already. <gasps> they just haven't publicly oh, said right, it. right, right, right. You know what? That's what we'll do. We'll tweet, we got K4! And then Task Force will be like, yep, it was them. And then, and then, and, mm-hmm. somebody from the CIA will be like, yeah, but we turned in your homework <laughs> last year. Then like, the, that is... Right. <laughs> Wild. Then the president of the United States. Not only did you take my homework, they have K four. You time traveled with it, right? Yeah. Do you think the solve is in the president's little notebook, the one that talks about aliens and Look, Area was, fifty one? And if I was the president, mm-hmm. and be like, hey, just tell me, I mean, just tell me. I'm not gonna tell anybody. Just I but like, I won't let it slip. Yeah. I wink. Look. President, Mr. President, you just winked. <laughs> yeah. No, but I won't tell anybody. Why are you holding up your pinky? What's going on here? <laughs> Pinky promised me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd be a weird president. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> what, what would be your first executive order? President Diaz sits down at that ancient old table with the secret drawers, and you say, I'm signing this one into action. Ooh, probably more pay for teachers. I think it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty high up there for me. Yeah. I, yeah. I love that one. Well, we really need that. You like, went real. I thought you'd release yeah, all the aliens from Area 51 yeah. or something. Hey, all right. Tell them about the ghosts. <laughs> not all, not all <laughs> jokes here. Sometimes serious stuff. No, I like that. But that's, I'd, that's I, I'd write that in as I was sipping on my sippy cup. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, like, come on now. You gotta oh, stay man. hydrated. A stacked up, just like real tall sippy cup that you're like, you're slurping down with one of those like, you know, uh, straws that's all wavy so it can be nice and bendy. Oh, hell and then when you yeah. take that out and you blow into it, it makes that whistle noise. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I know yeah. exactly yeah, I what you're talking about. Yeah. It's it's the straw that's got like the zigzag yeah, it sides. Does. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I remember those. Man, okay. Is that write the same that one that you can Don't tell Task Force yet. I want, I want a sippy cup. <laughs> is, that, is that the one you can <laughs> Just for me. Scrunch and unscrunch too? I think so. The straw? It kind of goes. Yeah. Yeah. Man, those are fun as hell. Simpler times. All right, so we know now that regardless of time, regardless of credit, we name dropped all of you. You got your props, but they all solved it properly, <laughs> or at least they all got the same thing. Now enter logician from Vancouver, Dr. Friedrich, who solved the ending to K2 using her findings from K4. She oh. actually backed out the solve of K2 using pieces of the unknown portion of K4. Wait, a logician? A logician, someone who is a student of logic. Oh, I was like a logical magician. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a mentalist. I was like, 
Honestly, not a thing, but that's what it sounds like to me. I would be lying if I said I didn't Google the term to make sure I knew what I was talking about. Like, show your magic trick and it's like, did that make sense? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> did you understand what I did there? <laughs> I love that. Dude, there are some cool jobs out there, though. Oh, I, I'm not going to lie. So awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're in college right now wondering what you should do, there are jobs out the wazoo that you might not have ever heard of. So get inspired, you know? Yeah. Go looking. But ultimately, the K4 message that she deciphered read as follows. I'm going to read this as is. X-P-I-S-T, as one word, comma, realize, comma, a Y D E Q H R, comma, and West X. I read those all as kind of like almost acronyms, yeah. as like separate words, but that's how she has it. And Mr. Sanborn has set up an emailing system, by the way, for anybody interested in trying to solve this. You don't get paid for trying to solve it. No. In fact, you have to pay a $50 fee to submit your guess what? Uh, for the fourth code. And that way, you know, I don't know if there's an automated system or what have you, but. He has this set up so that way he doesn't get bombarded directly. Now, uh, my hope is that if yeah. somebody comes through with the solve, that they pool that $50 situation and right. give it all to the person that solves it like a bounty. That'd be cool. That'd be kind. Because there should be a prize at the end of this thing. Oh, what yeah. if you just, like, just solved like what if K4 <laughs> and it's just like... Realize, realize, realize. Oh my God. Like, oh it my was Jaden Smith the whole time. <laughs> Thank like, you, Mr. Smith. That would be wild. Also, you get a 10% discount at the CIA Say gift the, store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exit through the gift store. Okay. So that is if you want to get involved. There are also uh, websites with over 2,000 members working together to try to group solve this, which I love. We're going to post these these links, but if you want to write them down in your mind notebook, there's alonka.com slash cryptos.groups.io slash g slash main. As with every URL, proceed with caution. You know, it is the internet, so I just want to put that out there. But hey, you're all individuals. Make your decisions. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you want to get involved with a group, you can do that. Speaking of groups, I'm going to side tangent for just a second because we've been discussing on our TikTok channel a bunch of the new dream surveys that have come out. We've also oh, been yes. talking about this year's Mayday mystery, which was 12 pages long. These are two just totally different mysteries that we've talked about that yeah, also have. use cryptography. That's why I wanted to bring it up. And we're actively trying to group think the Mayday mystery that came out this month. And uh, if you want to check out those TikToks, I break down page by page, thanks to Jillian's help. Uh, she's our researcher and, and producer here. Basically, what's going down on each page of this mystery and it's it's really cool. And I'm, I'm pretty sure both of these two mysteries are ARGs of some sort. And it is theorized that there is a, an end goal, an end purpose. But it is still so far from solved that I can't even conceptualize what that end point right. is. That'd but be yeah. cool if someone in the task force. I just imagine someone just task force HQ, anti-owl defense system, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just sitting at their cubicle. The AOD Raises their hand with a bunch of papers. Yeah. So many papers that other papers go flying everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's like, I got it. I solved it. It's like a 70s accounting firm in there. <laughs> yeah, Clickety clacks and paper flying. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just like, huzzah, we did it. We get to keep the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> One more day. <laughs> One more day. Damn, we got some expensive light bulbs. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We This mystery is going to take a wild turn because we've talked about all the known we're about to, uh, after this quick break, we're going to talk about the clues and theories that are leading into the unknown. Uh, all the clues we have about K4, all the theories, the running theories on how to solve this. And yes, light bulbs are involved. We've got light bulbs on the table. We do? Yeah. After a word from these sponsors. Hey, everybody. Trevor here, as always, with some Red Web Insight. Couple things on the agenda. It is... A few weeks on now, but the Baby Hands Plush is live. I'll be honest, I'm recording this quite early, so it might have sold out. If it's sold out, I'm so sorry, but thank you all so much for selling it out. If it's not sold out, hey, go get yourself a Baby Hands Plush. It's very cute and uh, caked up from the back up. So go to store.roosterteeth.com if you want to support the show with that. Otherwise, there are a couple other ways you can support us. Review us. Five stars on Spotify means a whole lot. We are almost, we are almost, we lost the edge but we're almost the number one podcast as far as the number of reviews goes. 
in the Rooster Teeth Network here at Rooster Teeth. So thank you all so much for coming out, spending your time to review us on Spotify. It means a whole lot. You can also review us on Apple and wherever else you listen to the podcast. It just means a whole lot to us. Thank you for that time. Otherwise, if you've done that and you want to keep going further, you want to keep supporting Red Web, we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash redwebpod. We upload the, uh, the podcast there with the visuals so that way you have it all ready to go. We also have our animated series over there. So lots of Red Web to consume and hopefully more on the way. And with that said, I want to talk about today's fantastic sponsors. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by Babbel. For most of us, learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly the high points in our academic careers. But now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. There are so many more ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can also access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Right now, you can save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash redweb. That's babbel.com slash redweb for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. This episode of Red Web is also brought to you by Audible, where you'll get tons of audio entertainment all in one app. You might know Audible for the incredible selection of audiobooks across genres, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries, thrillers, and so much more beyond that. So whether you listen to audio at the gym while relaxing at home or on your commute, Audible has a ton for you to choose from. Audible members can choose one title per month to keep, including new releases. I use Audible a lot when I go to the gym. It's just an easy time to be listening to books. It also encourages me to go to the gym simply because I won't allow myself to listen to my favorite books unless I'm in the gym. I listened to American Gods by Neil Gaiman on that app, and it was awesome. There was also a little behind-the-scenes preface at the beginning of the recording and at the end of the recording from the author himself giving a little bit of backstory as to why he wrote the book. It was really cool. So that's my experience. I really enjoyed Audible. And if you do too, let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. And new members can try Audible for free for 30 days. You can visit audible.com slash redweb or simply text redweb, all is one word, to 500-500 to try Audible for free for 30 days. Again, that's 30 days of Audible for free at audible.com slash redweb or texting redweb to 500-500 to join Audible and listen to a ton of book and podcast titles. With that said, let's jump right back into the mystery. So let's talk now about some of the ongoing clues and theories as to the solve for K4. And this is where it starts to get wild. So let's dig in. So it's been 30 years, essentially, just a little over since this original dedication of the Kryptos sculpture was, was made. And this fourth code, as I've mentioned multiple times now, is still very much unsolved. It is the shortest of the codes, with only 97 letters, and you have Ed Sheet who taught Sandburn cryptography from the very beginning. And he was the one who told the New York Times that the fourth code uses a technique called masking. And this, in retrospect, is what makes so much sense to me, because masking, or data masking, is a data obfuscation technique. It's the process by modifying sensitive data in such a way that is no longer of value or of little value to anybody who doesn't otherwise know what the answer is, essentially. You can use software to do this. You can have authorized personnel that use uh, masking techniques. But it is a cryptographic technique that is quite strong at blurring the reality. So that way, when you send data across unsecured lines, it stays secure in a way. So that to me says why K4 has yet to be solved because it is such a strong cryptography technique. Damn, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Also, it kind of makes sense as to why, because at first I was like, man, he's really just kind of given a big clue for K4 Yeah, in the sense of like, I use this technique. Mm -hmm. And then lo and behold, it's like a really strong way of, <laughs> of just like locking information down. And then you go, oh, that's why. Because yeah. It's like insanely hard. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense when you think about the original K1 through 4. And you see that the NSA solved it in three years. 
an individual solved it in nine, and then an analyst from the CIA solved it in eight years, yet it's been 32 years and the fourth one is still yet to be solved. So it shows the differing levels of techniques. In fact, masking is so difficult, this technique has proven so difficult to crack, that over time, solvers have urged the author, the artist, for clues, and so clues have been given. Let's talk about those. You imagine people going, please, please help. <laughs> you got typos in here. Uh, this is a, you, why'd you put typos? It's already <laughs> difficult. It's so hard. I'm divorced <laughs> three times. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Honey, come down to dinner. I got a clue to get. <laughs> I'm on to something. But you weren't. So uh, let's talk about some of those clues given here by the artist. The first clue was given and revealed, I should say, in 2010, around the 20th anniversary of the statue. And it's the word Berlin, the answer to the letters 64 through 69. Because again, there's about, you know, 97 letters. These, the word Berlin answers those specific ones. And then again, another clue was given in November of 2014. And this time the word was clock, immediately following the word Berlin. And it was for the letters 70 through 74. So in a row, we have the words Berlin and clock. The clue clock was revealed to honor the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, which influenced the creation of the Kryptos sculpture. So some theorize then, because of the phrase Berlin clock being right next to each other, it could mean that the fourth passage must have something to do with the set theory clock, which is also called the Berlin clock. So let's take a little tangent to talk about what this type of clock is. This clock tells time through 24 blinking lights rather than hands or numbers as we are all kind of accustomed to. Sanborn told New York Times, quote, you'd better delve into that particular clock. There are conspiracy theories involving this clock's creator, Dieter Benninger, and his death back in 1991 from an accidental plane crash. Just as a little, little tangent to the tangent, the conspiracy states that there was foul play in this crash because the lights that he used in the set theory clock were said to last 150,000 hours. And because of planned obsolescence, i.e. wanting light bulbs to burn out after only X number of days, weeks, right. and months, these businesses wouldn't want light bulbs that could last 17 straight oh years of being God. on. And so some think that his plane was maybe, uh, maybe there was some foul play in that crash to prevent him from patenting or releasing the patent on these light bulbs. Right. I mean, the same thing is just like, I don't know, they like the iPhone or something like that. I'm sure that they have very, very advanced tech with the iPhone mm -hmm. that they just go, okay, and we're just going to scale it back and then release it, trickle in increments it out, and trickle it out. Like, yeah, I fully believe. That. I definitely like yeah. in the early days, maybe not where it was like right. leaps and bounds. Exactly. But now it's the trickle. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you like, leap and bound now, what's right. your next move next year? The pressure's on. Stockholders want their new right. phone. Someone like a scientist walks in. You know, was it Tim Cook at this point? Yes, Mr. Cook. This battery will last us ten thousand hours. Woo! And they're just like awesome we trickle it out but no we could release it now for the people lock but then them. they'll buy one phone for forever exactly yeah. lock them behind the wall of ipads <laughs> oh man the day that a battery a battery level is a subscription based thing is i'm gonna scream oh no unlock the unlimited potential of battery plus oh no <laughs> <laughs> see you just uh, Tim Cook, I want ro I want royalties. Oh God! Someone, and I'm gonna use that to save the rainforest. Now, someone's like, that's not a bad idea. I want I'm gonna show you an image of the set theory clock. I've never heard of this clock before. It's so intriguing to me, and and we're diving into this one because of the Berlin clock idea. But I, I'm gonna show you a picture of one. I will tell you what time it denotes once you look at it. But I want you to describe for the first time seeing it to the task force. Here, Here we go, go. task force. Phone's in my hand. I'm not looking at it yet. There's no going back. I'm going in. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? It looks like modern art. Uh, Minimalist. This looks like uh, some type of like scoreboard or counter for a game show. Ooh, absolutely. I, I totally that, see that. That's what it looks like. You just at the top, you have a circle. 
it has like a sun in the middle is the light and mm -hmm. it's like a sun and the kind of like gradients of like yellow to like well maybe like white to yellow to orange just from this picture and then from there you have a tier below it that's four rectangles two were kind of like i don't know what is that like magenta uh, like purplish and the two on the left are pink with two yellow dots it below that it's all <laughs> just like the same row, but it's all purple. Then right. below that, a couple of rows of rectangles with different size. The rows are sliced it. up with different shades of those colors, uh -huh. and, and all the colors actually that were previously used. And the bottom is is four more rectangles. Yeah. Have you ever seen a general's uh -huh. jacket from like the military? Oh yeah, yeah. That's what that looks like. Where it's a bunch of different little rectangles, <laughs> yeah. all those little squares that denote action uh, or yep. rewards or mm -hmm. things of valor that they've done. It's kind of like that. What time? Looking at that, of course, I'm putting you on the spot. You don't know what the time is because I've never seen a clock like this. I don't know how to right. read it. What time would you guess that that's denoting? Two, four. It's a 24-hour clock, I'll remind you. Right. I see just the, the four kind of like on the on the pink backgrounds, like the four yellow dots. Mm -hmm. I was thinking those were hours, but that doesn't quite add up. But then what the hell is the bottom? Why is that? Does that go from day to night? <laughs> I don't know. 10.31. Wait, what? How? I couldn't make, I'll just be honest, I couldn't could make, make heads or tails of it, of it knowing it and then looking at the image. Again, the visual will be provided on our YouTube page Clock and our Twitter page. But Confusing as hell. Yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's basically a lot of rectangles that light up in different patterns to denote, in a way, if you understood how to decipher it, yeah. the time. It's a very intriguing looking item. Uh, it definitely looks like an old school game show in its color palette. Yeah, it it's very warm tones. Very interesting. Now, let's come back to the idea of clock because we have the clues for K4. We have Berlin and we have clock. Clock could also be about the decrypting method used famously by the man named Alan Turing. In 2020, Sandburn revealed yet another clue covering letters 26 through 34. This time the word was Northeast. So he's trickling out clues a lot now, and we're still not getting the solve. That's how difficult this particular puzzle is. Some believe that the fourth code has yet to be broken because it uses a brand new form of cryptography, which is totally viable. That's not... That hasn't been talked about like, before. Probably For, like the government knows, but like publicly it's not talked about. Right, exactly. In that sense? Just oh. like Alan Turing himself, Dude, when he made cheeky, the... Uh, an, was he When he broke the Enigma code, was that what it was called? There was a whole movie with this yeah. with Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumber, yeah, with Benedict Cumberbatch. They were basically breaking the Germans' code, which yeah. was so cryptic, they couldn't figure it out. That could be what's on hand. And maybe this is a reference to Alan Turing because of that. And so, in oh, my personal theory, it could it. be a way of putting out a gentle form, a short version of this new type of cryptography to see if the world can figure it out. And if you can't, if, the, if it's open to the public, anyone in the world can see this and they can't figure it out, maybe that indicates that this is a pretty strong cipher and that you have a very strong method that your government can communicate with itself with. Ooh. I love that idea. And that means that then the government might have an upper hand. With all the, the government, you know, goings the, on. Uh, yeah, and the knowledge. And the, I mean, like the amount of sippy cups they must Dude, have. <laughs> the sheer amount of sippy cups. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining a room full of analysts, buff as can be, ripped through their sleeves, going <laughs> on their sippy cups. <laughs> Getting all the electrolytes. I just, it just, it was, I'm sorry. It's so easy <laughs> to bring it back up. Damn, that might, not, that seems like it's not fair then. Yeah. But let's talk about some of the wrinkles that have made this kind of complex. Starting with Sandburn himself, because as we've talked about, he's thrown in some typos. But he's also shared some contradictory information regarding the sculpture's answer over the years. Oh, but is that on purpose, like the typos? Exactly. Damn. It only makes things a little bit more complicated. It's kind of like the human error level of, or like, layer to this puzzle. That you have to decipher Ooh, right. what is real and what is a, a misdirect, perhaps. Or is he just, I don't know, being wild and throwing out some curveballs? Yeah, I don't for know. the hell of it. So, again, to reiterate, the spelling mistakes supposedly on purpose to, quote, mix it up. But in response to the discussion on the set theory clock, Sandberg stated this, quote, 
there are several really interesting clocks in Berlin. There is another interesting clock worth mentioning called the Clock of Flowing Time, which is a water clock. If you live in Indiana, this is a very niche reference, but the Children's Museum in Indianapolis, which is an amazing children's museum, I was very grateful to grow up near it, there is a huge water clock there as well, which is all just run by water flowing through series of pipes and flasks and tubes, and it's all gravitationally pulled. So, you know, you'll watch the minutes build up and then the minutes will deplete and run through the system to fill oh, up the hourglass. Sick. It's really cool. And as a kid, it's right in the entryway. I would just stare at it and yeah, watch it go. I've done the same thing. But uh, it's, it's very cool. So it is worth mentioning. He is trying to say maybe it isn't this particular clock we just spent a while talking about. Maybe yep. it's one of these other very, very unique clocks in Berlin. Why does Berlin have so many clocks? I don't know, but I like it. I know. Well, I was like, hold on. How many unique clocks does Berlin have? Uh, he says there are several. So at least, what would you define several as? I feel like that's like a, three. Three plus? Three to three to seven? A couple is like two. Uh, it's a couple, two to, th it's two, right? It's not two like to The three. literal definition is two. But I say I got a yeah, couple of those like and I'll say I got three four. or four. Yeah, it's like yeah a, couple. a couple of those for me is like two to four. Several is like five plus. Several is like couple plus. Yeah. A double couple. You know? Yeah. Once you get, once you start, way. Once you get to two couples, you're in several territory. It's very simple. It was a confusing way to stack that together. I was like, huh? What? <laughs> okay. Now, leaving that for a second, there is another wrinkle worth talking about with some inconsistencies. So, he once claimed that he gave the complete solution to one person. The CIA director at the time, William Webster, during the sculpture's dedication ceremony, he kind of gave that solution to him. And so in the public's eye, this is where the solution is floating between him and the director of the CIA. Later though, he also claimed that he did not give Webster the entire solution. So maybe he gave part of it, maybe he gave none of it. You just walked back on your words, which is confusing. To add more complexity to this particular wrinkle, Remember earlier, we referenced WW in the K2 solution. And the reason why I wanted to kind of have you give a mental note to that is because mm -hmm. Sandberg did come out and confirm this particular passage as being correct. That passage, once again, was, who knows the exact location? Only WW. So it seems to imply that WW could be William Webster. And if that's the case, it could mean that the director of the CIA at the time had an important piece of this puzzle, maybe not the whole solution, right. but maybe he's part of the solve. But that is up for debate. I mean, he he only clarified that line. Didn't say who WW was. Oh, man. See, now I know why there's a whole community behind this. Because even the creator self is confusing. Yeah, very. But as I mentioned at the top of the show, Sanborn has said that if he were to pass away before anyone solves this, there will be someone... He hasn't said who, but there will be someone who will be able to confirm the solution down the way. So there is probably going to be this secret game of telephone if he passes away before it's solved, that the solution lives through others. And I'm sure it's going to be a trusted person that can't spill the beans, but uh, right. who knows? With regards to this very solution, though, it is worth mentioning that in 2020, Sandberg stated that he planned to put the secret to the solution up for auction to raise money for climate research once he dies. So he has two different methods mm. of going about this. Is he going to pass this off to a confidant? Or will there essentially be a switch where he passes away, the solution isn't known, so an auction goes live right. to buy the solution that proceeds will then go to help climate change? It's, it's hard to say. I'm kind of hopeful that someone is able to crack this mm -hmm. so we can have the man himself confirm this okay. because... In this line of work, talking about things on this podcast, I'm kind of tired of solves being done way after the fact. And then you go, is that the solve? Will it ever be solved? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. But either way, the solution will come out. How much do you think this uh, in. table costs? I think we just fire sale Red Web HQ. <gasps> we start, you know, look, task force. Let me pitch you working from home. I see what you're coming at. Okay. And pitch we sell everything. And we make a solid couple G's. <laughs> yeah, go into your and office then, and scoop up all your effects. And then we go to the auction. Mm -hmm. And we buy it. 
<laughs> Imagine we we raise, let's just say, two point five million dollars. Right. We go to this auction, like getting the bid started. Started at one hundred thousand dollars, one hundred thousand, one hundred fifty, one hundred fifty. Going once, going to two point five million dollars for the task force. <laughs> Jesus, okay, two point five. Going once, going twice. Can I get a two point six? Two point six over there. And we're like, oh damn it! <laughs> Immediately overlooked. Yeah. All of that for nothing. That would be the worst Kickstarter. It would be so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Very embarrassing. <laughs> Christian would have to change his identity. Yeah, it would, he'd have to run away with our know, laundered funds. Yeah, we don't have to give away the plan right and now. And then if okay. and then if Task Force suddenly shows up in a mansion, it has nothing to do with it. Right. Yeah, we just expanded some more. <laughs> you know, into real estate. We're just constantly <laughs> expanding and uh, and like unexpanding. And <laughs> right, right. We we expand and contract as we find necessary. Right. Mostly expanding. Yeah, but you know, if if things go kaput. You know, we're still looking at these review numbers and I'm thinking, you know, the quotas are in. We might need another 20, 30 five star reviews here on Spotify to keep the execs from coming down, yeah. laying the hammer down specifically on Christian. They're really breathing down. My the man that guy. we they, put up the top, they at said, the top of our pyramid. Said, Those expansion plans are really hurting the budget. They're getting on me about <laughs> right. it. Right. <laughs> it was pretty much like, look, I'll read between the lines. They said we don't get one team more five star reviews with the hashtag save Christian. <laughs> <laughs> that way we know. That way we yeah. Who's to, listen? They, I will. I'll they be can honest. track it that way. You know what I mean? Not by the date, <laughs> but by the hashtag. <laughs> right, right, save right. Christian. Then that way they'll keep funding the force. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I will say though, if we get five star reviews after this that don't say save Christian, they just actively hate me. They're just actively rooting for me to go away. I mean, you can support the show and not support Christian by it's doing true. it that way. Exactly. <laughs> but realistically Draw your line speaking, in the sand. <laughs> yeah. Damn. But I do want to get real for a second because I just pull up our Spotify page. And we've talked about Spotify specifically, but you can review us anywhere like right. iTunes and all of that. But I wanted to mention Spotify because, you know, us and our sister podcast over at Jam Face Face Jam. Yeah, yeah. Mm, Jam Face. We had a little uh, review battle going on. And since then, it was, it was I don't remember the where shadows. we started. <laughs> it was very much in the shadows. Since then, I don't remember where we started. Christian, do you remember where we were? Because we're now at no. 6,200 reviews. I think oh, we were we've gone up or something. We've gone up we're thousands. Like, yeah. yeah, we're at like 4,100 or so something. So truly, 42, Task Force, maybe. thank you um, for, for supporting the show in that way. It really does mean a lot. Yeah. Um, so when we go to like pitch ideas for Red Web's less jokey expansion mm -hmm. to, to do other things... To, to, for example, whether we go ghost hunting again or maybe, I don't know, go uh, cryptid hunting yeah and, and take this show on the road and get real tangible with it, we can point to this and show mm -hmm. that we are one of Rooster Teeth's, if not the biggest, most reviewed yep. show under Rooster Teeth. That really does make a difference. So thank you all so much for those who have gone out and spent a, a few seconds yeah. of their, their time to, uh, to give us a little bit of a five-star review. And if you haven't... Raise your <laughs> arm high into the air. Let me see those baby hands. Stri there they are. There they are. Strike I see you. that finger across on five big dark. <laughs> oh, five, please. Five, uh, please. You know, <laughs> we we request the five, but please. Know, we're desperate. Uh, we're desperate. Five, we're five massive stars. Hashtag save Christian. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you choose. Um, but it, no, it, it's. Again, we say this a lot, but I just want to reiterate the fact that we can literally talk about all these different mysteries and cryptids and everything. Um, I remember talking and it was like internet mysteries, mm -hmm. but very, very quickly we were like, oh man, we kind of want to talk about cryptids and stuff. And, yeah. And you guys rode the wave with us. Absolutely. And so now we just, there, there's, we're not confined into this box of one specific thing mm -hmm. and then on top of that you guys roll with us enough where we can make all these jokes and different tangents because you know this is just we're just scratching the surface mm -hmm. we're just kind of like giving you that quick little like bite size uh podcast of the mystery on your little drive or you're working out or maybe you're a doctor delivering babies or something like that i don't know whatever it is that you're doing maybe you're cranking 90s in Fortnite and you're listening along but we appreciate you guys because we get to be 100 us and you guys roll with us. And that is everything. Absolutely. It's entertainment for you. Hopefully, it's it's a career for us. And you enable us to talk about our passions while also bringing our own unique flavor. We get to goof off a little bit. We try mm -hmm. not to get too much in the way of the mystery. But hey, 
We're here to have a good time. Yeah, we're we talk about fun. the spookies of the world because God, do I love the unknown. There's so many cool things. Yeah. Well, with that said, thank you all so much. And Fredo, I'll see you right back here next Monday for another mystery. Well, the budget warrants it. Well, of course. Christian, hopefully see you. Sorry, hopefully see you, baby. Christian, you better count it. 20, 20 of them. Counting. It's going to be refreshing. All night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who is one? Just name me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. My God. He's like, oh, bless up another one. <laughs> <laughs> He's making so many alts and going, <laughs> <laughs> save Christian. <laughs> you got to save him. He's the best. He's my favorite part. <laughs>